Good morning and welcome to The Review, the Instagram live podcast where Kendama news and culture is shared over the warmth of coffee. I'm your host, Adam, and today we are welcomed by EDM legend, world check icon, and Sweets Mob member, Mr. Boogie T. We're going to have a really exciting conversation on the impact of Kendama on Mr. Boogie T's life, as well as his journey into becoming an EDM artist. We're also going to be talking about the future of Kendama, especially through the Sweets Mob. Talking about how Kendama can branch into new markets and we can all grow together in this game that we love called Kendama. So I'm super excited for this interview, but as always, as we jump into any episode of the review, I want to know what you are drinking this morning down in the chat. You know that I'm here with my casual cup of coffee, freshly brewed in my AeroPress, Um, But what you might not know, but what I have been clouding for the past week and a bit, is that I actually wrote a guide on how you can brew AeroPress the same way that I do. Now, by no means do I think I am the coffee expert in the Kendama community. I'm going to give that props to Jay Queens and to the many baristas that play Kendama. However, I do get the question all the time on how do I make my cup of coffee. So if you want to know, head over to cafekendama.com slash blog and check it out. You can find out how I brew my cup of coffee, and if you try it, Uh, That way, let me know. I want to know if it turned out well for you and if you need any help there. Uh, Alongside that, I did want to let you guys know that we've started something new on the Cafe Kendama page. Uh, We are doing weekly Sunday morning coffee chats as best as I can. I know this might not happen every single Sunday, but most Sundays I want to jump on live with one of the listeners, one of our fans of the show, or just someone from the Kendama community for a casual cup of coffee on a Sunday morning and talk. These are not going to be recorded. These are not going up on the Brewview podcast. These are just fun conversations. We've been doing these with Kendama Goat, with other members in the community, and this week we have a cool little challenge to find out who's going live tomorrow with me. Uh, where I put up a post with a give me the best caption and the best caption determined by likes is coming live with me tomorrow morning for a cup of coffee and just a casual chat as a fun way to share the love of Kendama and coffee. We got three people in the runnings right now, Bray Dama, we got the Bevel's Advocate podcast and we got Dama Dreams from Alberta that are all competing right now for the top spot on the most liked comment. Uh, That said, we're going to dive into this interview in a couple seconds, but before we do, a couple things I do want to remind you guys as we dive into each episode. Those of you that are tuning in live, you have the opportunity to engage in this episode by more than just listening and viewing. You can submit questions that will get asked in this episode. You can pop those down in the Q&A tool at the bottom for Mr. Boogie T. And we have set aside time in today's episode to ask your questions. Now, alongside that, the other thing I want to do is walk through the chat here and see what you wonderful people are drinking this morning. We got Dilly Odama who says he's just finished listening to all the podcasts and he's all cut up and he's time for a live weekly review. Welcome here, Dilly Odama. We got official D purchase with his oat milk latte. Wonderful. We got D Pats shouting out Brock who is joining us in a hot minute here. We got Tactic Certified with his Yerba Mate Chai with a splash of half and half and a, and a tuff of maple syrup. I don't, I've never heard anyone measure maple syrup in tufts, so I think you mean a touch, but I think a tuff is a cool measurement. Uh, we got Epic Palm Tree shouting out that this is about to be a lit interview coming up, and I do agree. I think that this is going to be a fun interview for us all to partake in. So what are we all waiting for? Well... Let us not wait too much longer. Let's get Mr. Boogie T in here and let's kick off this brew. If you guys can give him a warm welcome, toss some likes in the chat, toss some boogies in here, and let's dive into this week's review. Mr. Boogie T. Yo. Dude, what up? welcome here. Good to be here. Dude, my absolute pleasure. How are you doing this morning? I'm great. Are you going to ask me what I'm drinking? Dude, you better believe I'm going to ask you what you're drinking. All right, so on this lovely, what is it, Saturday, Saturday morning, I'm drinking a cool, a cool brew uh, mixed with a little bit of half and half and some, uh, some what is it, organic, like, raw sugar. <laughs> hey, right on. Dude, cool. I, like, this, <laughs> this morning, I, I didn't know. I, was, I wasn't sure if you were a coffee guy or not. So I went on some of your old interviews. I don't know if you saw this, what I put on, on my story, but I found a clip from an interview you were in uh, from Buku Fest or whatever it was called. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's this, like, 30-second riff you go on that's hilarious. You're, like, you're talking about how you're just exhausted. Three weeks on the road, three weeks of straight yeah. shows, and you're like, man, I, I go to my hotel in a nice, comfy bed, take a bubble bath, straight up. I wake up, I, I got to have some coffee. A lot of oh, coffee. Yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot of coffee. Of coffee. <laughs> Dude, I, it's, it's, that was a really tough break, like, 
like segment of shows. Dude, I, it I was believe gnarly. it. I believe it. We'll get into the whole show story, but you are a coffee guy, hey? Yeah, I like coffee. Hey, right I, on. I've been catching myself. I like, I'll drink one and then I'm like, well, let me just go get another one. And then I'm like, after that one, I'm like, maybe I'll get another one. And then I'm like, oh, that was a bad idea. I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I work at this office building. We have like a, an electric coffee making machine. It's like not the best coffee in the yeah. world, but it's free. And I always find myself just like going and getting another cup, going and getting another yeah. cup because I don't have to do it myself. It's free. It doesn't cost me anything. <laughs> By the end of the day, I'm like four or five cups deep. And I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> Dude, it's always that crash, like midday. I'm like, oh no, why yeah. am I shaking? I'm not even doing anything. <laughs> I didn't know I could type 300 words per minute. <laughs> But anyways, oh, dude, Mr. Boogie T, welcome here to The Review. I'm really excited for this conversation. You have been an incredible impact on the Kendama community. I think most people are very, very grateful for the work that you have done in growing this game that we love, where we play ball and cup, and yeah. it's freaking dope. And you have been a huge proponent of pushing that game to a whole new wave of people. And I'm just excited to get some of your thoughts on that as we dive in. But before we do, I always like to ask a couple simple questions and kick things off. Yeah, I want to know, dude, what's your favorite trick? Oh, obviously. It's obviously a whirlwind. I didn't think I needed to ask this question, it's but so I think everybody obvious. needed to hear the answer. Oh, yeah, whirlwind. What if I'm just like, oh, yeah, just I've actually been on a spike jug kick, a jug spike kick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's just like, I'm trying to get that one a little closer, you know? So it's like every time. But yeah. that's how I felt with whirlwind. I'm like, that is the coolest trick I've ever seen. And I'm like, I got to be able to do it first try. Because I was hanging out with the sweets guys. Mm -hmm. You know, and like, I'd be like, all right, Cooper, you know what I'm going to ask you? He's like, ah. so he'll grab his Dom real quick, like out of nowhere. I like, so the funniest thing when he does it, it'll be all wrapped up and he'll just take the ball off and go, well, the Tama and just swing it and then spike it, like swing it off the, like when it's all wrapped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, whoop, whoop, whoop. And then spike it. Then I'm like, dude, first try every time. I'm like, I got to be able to do that. Yeah, man. Uh, it, is, it is crazy what some people can do with Kendama. Okay. Uh, last question I want to ask before we dive into the meat of our conversation today. Yeah. I want to know uh, who is the most influential Kendama player in your life or influential Kendama icon? Um, I mean, it goes deep. I mean, it's got to be like straight up there's a couple, man. It's like my mob, you know, like the sweets guys, for sure. Mm -hmm. So it starts with Reed Stark, you know. He gave me, like, one yeah. of my first doms, you know, like, ever. And that was in, what, 2017, I think, at a, a New Year's show. Yeah. So it might have been turning 2018. But that was, I mean, he gave me the first dom, and then uh, from there I was stoked. But I, I got one for Christmas. But I'm going to say Reed... Obviously, Cooper, just watching his tricks really mm -hmm. got me to somewhere else. Um, Matt Sweets, obviously. But, uh, like, other cats that I like, I'm really fond of Bonds, you know? Oh, yeah. How can of you course, not like obviously. Bonds, though, I know, right? and I, I, I got to meet him, so he's a cool cat. And that was a fun time. Right on. So you've yeah. been playing for a couple of years. That's sick. You've been playing since 2017? Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay, wow. Well, we'll definitely dive into that story. I'm really excited to hear your Kendama journey. I think everyone's Kendama journey is so unique. And I've realized that over the like 27 episodes that we've done of this show now, that everybody's gotten into it from a unique way. Like some yeah. people picked it up by themselves, started playing by themselves. Other people got introduced by a friend. Some people that have even been on the show were introduced by you. Uh, that That's you crazy. had actually yeah. influenced other people like M. Caprio and uh, Lauren. I believe. Oh, yeah, I love them. They're yeah, great. they're awesome. They're, they're amazing. <laughs> Um, but I love Lauren's we... wall. It's like yeah. four or five boogie doms. I'm like, let's go. Yeah, she's, she's got them all. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's harvesting a collection. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Before we dive in, I want to remind those of you guys in the chat that you can participate in today's episode as well. Uh, throw some questions down in the chat. Make sure that you are getting in this episode. Um, one thing you might want to do, Boogie, before we get too far into this, you, you got a big beard. Uh, and yeah. your mic is rubbing up against it a little bit. Is it? Yeah. If you want to just unplug it. I can take this off. Yeah. We can, we can give that a go. I was doing that so I could hear better. That's an, I didn't know. It wasn't really scratching it. <laughs> <laughs> Only a little bit. <laughs> That's funny. I was like, damn, I just want to be able to hear a lot better. <laughs> Dude, I, I like, I, I'm like 25 years old and I still can't grow a good beard. This is like my no-shave November that I've kept on. Well, dude, I, I mean, I'm 28. I started growing this 
three years ago. This is my first beer, like my first big beer. Did so I? Well I'm trying to catch way. up to you. You're well on your way. <laughs> trying to catch up. I actually you can just let it go. Dude, I made, I made an impulse buy this this uh, November. Uh, I was like looking around. It's No Shave November, November. We're supporting men with uh, prostate cancer. And yeah. and I like get these ads for Beard Club or like all these yeah. different beard growth things. I'm like, screw it. I'm going to buy a beard growth kit. So Do I bought it. one. It hasn't come in yet, but I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> I like that. That's some good news. I like, when anybody goes on a beard journey, I'm like, hey, power to you. Let's go. <laughs> We're going on it. We're going on it. Yeah. Okay. Dude, let's dive into this week's review. I want to know some of your journey here, but ultimately I think a lot of your journey, I want to take back to music first, because I think that's where it begins a lot for you before it even comes close to Kendama. Oh, You've sure. been doing the music thing for forever, but where did that all begin for you? Oh man, ever since I was a little bitty baby boy, little bitty kid. So my grandma, she was like super into music and she was writing children's plays and children's music, children's books. She was a... a like GT science teacher, all this kind of stuff. So yeah. she was all into that. <clears throat> so I, I started playing like on pots and pans while she would be playing piano and stuff. And then eventually I was like, well, what is the ice cream man song? Like, that's like one of the first songs I ever remembered the, the entertainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, show me how to play that. So she showed me how to play that. And I was like, this is super fun. So I started playing piano I took piano lessons, like from like, what, five, six, seven around then. And then about eight, I got my first guitar, also from my grandparents, you yeah. know, and then started taking lessons uh, for about, it took about a year, you know, and then I, I actually moved in with my mom, so somewhere else, and then moved back. So I started taking lessons again the next, I think I was 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I just, I kept shredding from there. I, I started taking with this guy named Walter Poussin out in Lafayette, Louisiana. He's like okay. a blues legend and Sick. I learned all my theory and all my blues riffs and like who to who to listen to all the good soul stuff and he really guided me in a, a really cool direction of music you know yeah that's yeah. super sick yeah. so y you were always into are uh, always into music and that was just what you grew up around were your parents super into music as well or was it mostly from your grandparents just my grandparents pretty much uh my dad doesn't really play my mom didn't play um but yeah my grandma and like all that side they kind of do their thing yeah. Was that ever a tension for you growing up that your parents weren't uh, like musical people? Did they did they understand the journey you were going on? Were oh, yeah. They super they're, supportive. They're always supportive, for sure. Yeah. Like, no matter what, <clears throat> my dad actually would help me book shows. Like, he got me a bunch of my first shows. So he was selling like law books back in the day to like all Yo. these lawyers. So law offices, they needed all the books. So all these corporate events where they'd have like they'd set up and sell law books. He's like, well, I know a band. So <laughs> it'd be 12 year old me. <laughs> And I bring my, my blues band. I have like these like 40 year old dudes playing with me. So I was always the little kid that was fronting like these like really old cats and we're playing just old blues classics. And I mean, we're making bank at these corporate events, you know? <laughs> so I'm like 12, 13 years old, just walking away with like a grand. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, I mean, I was playing what, four hour sets. Wow. Insane. I mean, I'm just riffing blues all day. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah it was crazy. What a hustle at 12 years old, just hustling yeah. lawyers. That's yeah. so sick. Yeah, man. So blues was kind of your first love of music? Oh, yeah. Blues, okay. rock and roll. And I was, I was really, so my guitar teacher wanted me to play blues, you know? And he's like, he kept explaining, explaining. I get it now, like what he was saying. He's like, dude, it's, it all starts there. It's like, I wanted to play rock and roll because I was like a little kid. Yeah. You know, like, I want to, I want to shred. Cool. He's like, chill out. Just listen. So I, I learned all the basics and the, the roots of everything and where it all stems from. So mm -hmm. it just makes a lot more sense now. And then everything gets put together. And, and once you figure that part out, it, it just all blends together. Music and music from that point. It's kind yeah. of crazy. That's super cool. So if someone was getting into music today and, mm -hmm. you know, they might have a love for, for some specific genres, whether or not it be like EDM or rock and roll or something, would you tell them like, no, man, chill out for a second. You, you should actually go study some blues first. Is that what uh, you would no. re recommend? No, 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 no. It depends on like, <clears throat> I would say like the journey you want to take. So my journey, I wanted to be like a straight up guitar player, you know, like, mm. like blues rock guitar player, you know? And if that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do. But if you want to be like an electronic music producer, then you need to study electronic music, you know? It just depends mm -hmm. on what you're going to do. And it's, it's studying it. It's not imitating or copying. 
you got to study and figure out what's going on and what the patterns are and what makes that genre that genre yeah. kind of thing, you know? And yeah. then you try to find out your own voice. You find out what you're inspired by and then you mold your voice. That's basically the deal, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's sick. So, okay. So you, you were playing blues, you were getting into that world, you were hustling some lawyers. Mm -hmm. uh, when did that start converting into like, this is a full-time thing and then getting you into the dubstep EDM scene? Where did that transition take place? Okay, so back to my grandma, she got me, I love saying, so my grandma bought me acid when I was 10. And acid is Sony acid, it's a program to work on music. But it's just a funny, yeah, my grandma bought me acid when I was 10. <laughs> And uh, so I started working on that program uh, and like making beats and all kind of stuff. And so it came with like a loop CD with a bunch of drum loops and different flutes and saxophones and all kind of different random stuff. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I can make hip hop. And then the first time I found out about ever like taking one of those loops, I'm like, I want, so the, let's say the beat was boom, ka, boom, ka. I'm like, well, yeah. I want it to go boom, boom, ka, boom. God. I'm like, well, how do I do that? I'm like, well, maybe I just moved this little bar. I'm like, it blew up my whole world. So I'm like, I can actually make a beat myself. 10 years old, I'm like, okay, I'm figuring this shit out. So yeah. we get that. And then uh, I, I, I was probably 17. I was making beats this whole time. So from 10 yeah. to 17, imagine just making hip hop and rap yeah, yeah. and doing all kinds of stuff. So my production level is getting a lot better but I'm still playing in my bands <clears throat> and none of my mm -hmm. friends want to come to my shows, let alone they can't come to my shows. Cause like, check it out. I'm playing at bars for yeah. like older people and none of my friends are allowed to drink. So they can't get in the bar. Right. Nobody wants to book a little kid that none of his following could come. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, man, but all the clubs and you could be 18 and get in there. So all my friends just went to the clubs. And yeah. like they're dancing, you know, having fun. I'm like, all these DJs. And that was like the first time I ever got introduced to dubstep. I heard mm. a DJ play, uh, what, Dougie, like, you know, uh, teach me how to Dougie, teach me, teach me how to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play that over bass head with bass yeah. nectar. And I was like, okay, I could do that. I'm like, I can do that. Yeah, okay. So, I, <laughs> so yeah, you were. Started, you're it was like yeah, sorry, go ahead. friends were actually at these other shows. I'm like, well, I could play these shows and like people will come. So my branch into that, I had to infiltrate the system once again. So my dad, he helped me out with this. He For Christmas one year, he bought me like some, some cheap lights from Guitar Center. So mm -hmm. there was this one little place called, uh, what was it the pub? Or I think Jefferson Street Pub, I think. JP's, JP's, yeah. So, uh, they had all these little electronic acts. We're all local, you know, it's just this little bar on the corner in the shopping center. So I was like, man, I started going there and I was like, dude, they don't even have lights. And so every time they'd have a DJ come, I'm like, well, I just got lights for Christmas. And it was like a little light bar and like three yeah. lights. So I'd plug those in and it's all, um, it's all sound active. So I didn't have to do anything. Plug those in, I make a hundred bucks every weekend, you know? And yeah. I'm like, that's even more than I was getting paid for my, my other band shows like at, like the little clubs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I'd do that. And then I was like, you know, guys, I'm a DJ too. So they'll be like, oh, whoa. So you can do lights and DJ and we don't have to pay this other guy. So yeah, I'd be like, yeah, give me 200 bucks and I'll DJ the night and do my lights. Hey, sick. So it, I started actually getting a following and I was like, I was being, I was able to test out my own music, you know, and then see what actually worked. And mm -hmm. that's another thing about production too. It's It's really tough to produce really big songs if you don't know what they sound like on a big system right but you had that privilege because you actually got to be there doing the lights you got to yeah. be there in the in the stage in the studio yeah. seeing it all happen all the time yeah and I, I mean i was also collecting like gear and stuff so i had a bunch of yeah. like, uh, sound equipment and stuff and i i mean you should have seen my room it was just like a madman scientist layer of speakers and amps and stuff. I'm like, where can I plug this into that and to make it louder? My parents are always cutting the, they'd have to cut the breakers on me and stuff. It was nuts. They literally cut the breakers off. That's, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. They're like, shut up. I'm like, oh, man. 
So when you started making the transition from blues into EDM, it's a very different genre and, and generally a different audience that listens to that. Did, was that was that a weird transition for your family or for your grandparents? Or were they like, yo, this is sick? No, um, I mean, they they were just supportive in anything I did. They, I mean, they heard all my little rap songs and stuff I used to make, and they just thought everything I did was awesome. And that's what made it. That made my confidence boost. I'm like, yeah, oh, check it out. I wrote a song. They're like, that is awesome. I'm like, is it? And then I'll listen back to them now, and they are so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> Sometimes parents are too supportive. They don't know how yeah, to tell yeah. us we need to oh, get wait, better. Let me, let me show you this. You're like this. So I found this the other day. It's my first CD I ever made. <laughs> Right on. As you go and show us, hey, those of you that are tuning in, uh, definitely drop some questions down in the Q&A. There's going to be tons today. We recognize that. Uh, we'll try and get through as many as we can, but make sure you put a good one in there. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Look at that. That's me right there with the blonde <laughs> hair. My boy Caleb on the right. Our band was called One Card Shy. Look at that boy. <laughs> Look at that dude. Let's go. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my, my goodness. Your first CD. Yeah. So did you have to ever go through that journey of like backpacking your CDs, hustling them out your bag or anything like that? Yes, or did 1000%. So actually, in after that picture, I'm pretty sure we so we had a we literally had a red wagon, a little radio flyer red wagon. And I would put all my amps and my guitars and stuff in it and at my grandma lived in the park. So I was able to take my little wagon and go to the big gazebo. It was yeah. like in the middle of the park. And we just set up our gear and just shred all day. And I mean, some people would start coming up and, you know, we put a little hat out, make some tips. But I mean, like I said, we're 12 years old. They're, they just thought we were cute. I'd sell my CDs out there. So I was selling my CDs in the park with my little red wagon. And then also there was another time I, uh, in high school, we, we made some, uh, some rap albums. And then we're like, yo, so we sold like 80 of them in a day. We just had, so the trick was we had a bunch of like, like the, the quarterback. I was like, yo, we get you on a feature, you know? I had a couple of like my friends were cheerleaders. So we had them featured on there. And everybody's like, I'm like, yo, Megan's rapping on this one. They're like, no way, <laughs> Megan's rapping? I'm like, yes, you gotta check it out. So, yeah. so I, sold, that. I sold $800 worth of CDs in one day out of a duffel bag in high school. Yeah. And I almost got like, like suspended for it. They're like, you can't no sell stuff at school i'm like well y'all are selling like candy and chocolate and stuff like for your like bake club. sales like, and this so, is yeah. my club i'm selling stuff for my club i need gas money to get to school y'all tripping yeah that's and crazy I'm guitar lessons so that helped and it's okay so super strategic of you that i think a lot of people probably don't even realize that like that is such a strategic way to grow any platform is by yeah. trying to get features on and stuff Part of the reason that I Features. think like this, this podcast started to grow was because I just had other people on it. Like if it was just yeah. me talking, who wants to listen to me talk for, for an hour, right? But it's like, think about it. You have a whole friend group. I got a whole friend group. Yeah. The Let's team up. Look at that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and I mean, vacation is the craziest thing. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and, and we'll talk about that too, especially in regards to Kendama, because that, that's sort of the equation that's coming into play right now, especially even with yourself and the sweet mob in general. It's like you guys have this crazy influence in these other genres of the world and these cultures that Kendama wasn't really in. Yeah, and and sure. you've been that gap. You've been that feature on the album for Kendama that has grown Kendama in such an incredible way. And so- It feels great. I mean, I, it was easy. It's so, it was literally, I didn't really have to do anything. I just played with it around my DJ friends. And they're like, well, that's sick. I'm like, I knew you'd love it. So actually, when I said uh, Reed gave him my first one, yeah, I got to give a big shout to my boy Squanto. You know, Squanto was like the first one that I ever saw one. So he was just like shredding on it hard. He's like doing really fast cups and like yanking it everywhere. I'm like, what the? That doesn't even look fun. You know, like you're just going. <laughs> so he never showed me how to play it. And then I was like, okay. Uh, then I started really getting into it after like, I think that Christmas, my stepmom got me one. Actually, she got my dad my sister's boyfriend and my neighbor one. And I was yeah. like, well, I want one. So I took my neighbor's one. And, <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's how it went. Okay, but that's yeah, sick. Shout out to Mr. Squanto for sure. No way. So, okay, so so that was about three years ago that you got your first Kendama. Maybe let's, yeah. let's, let's start pivoting towards Kendama here a bit. Uh, 
talk to me about how you kind of got into Kingdom Hearts. So you got your first one. You started playing. Did it click instantly? Like, like you were th this was the thing, or well, did it take some time? I remember the first time I like started really getting into it. It was like we were working on like one of our first trio EPs. And like after, like during the sessions, I would just like play, you know, but I'd start going home and I didn't have anybody to show me. And I also didn't like mm -hmm. look at any videos. Like I didn't really think about, oh mm -hmm. yeah, there's a whole community that does this. I just had one. And I'm like, yeah. okay, so I'm just going to try it. And I remember like getting my first kin flip and I was like, I'm going to film this. <laughs> and the first time I filmed it and like put it on Instagram, I was like, that felt so good. And I just yeah. kept rewatching it and rewatching it. I'm like, I can't believe I just laced that. Like, I can't believe yeah. that. And then I was like, well, what if I try this? What if I try this? What if I film it? And I'm like, yeah. So when I filmed it, I was like, now I could say that it actually happened. Yeah, because if so, you don't film it, you never landed the trick, right? It doesn't right. count. <laughs> and like, I was like, no, look, look, look. And they were like, dang, that's pretty sick. So that's the same, like, the same hype I was getting with like learning music, you know? I, mm -hmm it felt like it was just, it just kept happening. I'm like, how'd that trick just fall there? How'd that just get, I'm yeah. like, I cannot believe it. And that excitement really got me into it. You know, I'm like, wow, it's just pure euphoria. Every time yeah. you hit a, hmm. Yeah, it's, it's one of the most satisfying things because you have to grind for so long to hit something. Yeah. It's not like, I feel like there's certain things in life that are a little bit easier to like see the steps to get there, but it's either you hit it or you don't hit it with yeah. Kanama. It's not like a, you can wet tip and you can get really close, but it's not like you can ever half hit it's something. It's not that, it, you didn't hit it. You yeah. Know? I love it. Ex it's exactly, and so when you do get it, it's like you hit your first whirlwind, that is one of the most Ooh. satisfying tricks to get in the Boy, world, it took me 45 I think. minutes straight. I remember that day too. I was on tour and I just set up my camera and I was like, dude, I'm hitting this. I think it was like right after a show, I was all pumped up and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna grind it out. And I remember it was in Alabama at wow. Saturn Bar upstairs in the green room it's like your first time you, know, you never forget never forget yep, the first never right forget. um okay so i want to know um you got introduced to reed pretty early on in your kendama journey yeah. from my from my understanding and that started to become the bigger connection to the kendama community was yeah. through reed and then into suites and those sorts of, of connections how, how did that take place like how did you get connected to reed so that was a show called snoda in minneapolis at the armory and yeah, he just popped up and was like, yo, we made everybody. They actually made us our own kendamas. Like, this is my first <laughs> custom mod. So this is Snoda. It says Snoda on it. And then yeah. T. Whoa. Yeah. So like, they gave all the artists one. So everybody that played got a sweets. Whoa. Custom Dom. And I was like, wow, this is really, really cool. And I'm like, well, I want my own custom, custom one. You know, like I want to make one after that. But yeah, but everybody got one. And then Reed came in, gave me one of his and showed me how to use it. Because I, I remember telling him, I was like, yo, my buddy Squanto had one. And he tried to show me. I'm like, I'm not very good. He's like, trust me, just try this. And he showed me like the spike. And I was like, OK, yeah, I, I could work with this. Yeah. Did you know Reed beforehand? Did you know who he was at all? No, no clue. No, so how did he introduce himself to you? Did he just walk up and be like, yo, I got a doll with <laughs> Shout out Reed. He's he knows he's chat. like, oh, come on. He took that from me. He's taking all my little sayings. So like, yeah, we're, we're really good homies now. Like pretty, pretty solid friends. <laughs> Yeah, and it, like a quick break here for a second. Shout out to Reed Stark. Honestly, yeah. the guy has done so much for Kendama. Bro. Reed is an incredible, incredible human who has grown Kendama in, in a really significant way. And yeah. I think the whole community should recognize that and, and take that moment. So shout yeah, out he, to Reed. He made, the, he made up the mob. Yeah. Reed yeah. literally is probably one of the key influencers in this wave of Kendama's growth. I think he's done more for Kendama than most, most people can do. Yeah. And that's partly out of his position and where he's at in his life and his connections. But honestly, he's put in so much. Yeah. Uh, the, the best thing, remember we were saying like the collabs and how we have, I have a set of friends, he has a set of friends, you know, he, that's what he's doing. Oh, look, there he is. <laughs> yeah. up, Down in the chat, Reed. But yeah, he, uh, that's the coolest thing because like i mean i would have never met half of the cats like when we went on the sweets mob trip we went out to seattle and i'm i'm hanging out with hobie doan 
and uh, fucking Boo Johnson yeah. and all these cats. I'm like, so pro BMX there. We got pro skateboarder David Gravett. I mean, amazing skateboarders and BMXers and just action sports guys. And I'm like, these cats are so fun. Like, I had the best time. Yeah. And I've like, ever since I was a little kid, I was kicking it with like, you know, skaters and stuff. And I, I was never really good at it, but I was just the musician guy. Yeah. so i was I'm like on this trip i'm the musician guy it's cool yeah you'll play the beats while they do the tricks right yeah yeah it's fun Sick. so like that's the whole plan of the mob and we all get to kick it and we have similar interests which is really amazing yeah that's sick okay well, i, I want to talk more about that in a sec but maybe let's take a break here and answer some questions in, in the q a yeah. here there's a ton yeah. of them that came in in advance so we're gonna always try and go through the ones that were submitted early because they were on the ball and then we'll get to some of them in the chat here in a sec we got a ton of really cool questions here from a lot of different people. And I think partly because like you stand out in the community, you're, you didn't come to Kendama in the same way that a lot of people came to Kendama and you've done so much and you are an influencer in the community. So uh, one question here from D Pats underscore 48, he's a regular listener of the show. He wants to know how often do you have a Dama while you're performing on stage? And do you feel like there's more pressure to try and lace a whirlwind while you're on stage? Fact, every show, every show I will have a Dama on stage and there's no pressure because I will just do it. <laughs> have you have you missed yet while on stage? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's like, it's usually, I mean, there's been three or four first tries, which is, oh. Those feel the best. So good. But uh, it's usually about two or three tries, you know, never much more than that. I've never been like, oh shit. Uh, 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 to still go uh, uh, <laughs> guys the show can't go on <laughs> no well that happened with the the sweets live stream they were like yo whirlwind check it took me like it was like one of my first times ever and it was the 24-hour stream so i'm on there for what like oh, like seven ten minutes trying to hit a whirlwind but they ended up raising like 600 bucks or something in that time frame because they're like yo another 20 if boogie can make it another 20 if he can make it yes and, it, and then i ended up donating like another big hundred because i'm like yo you guys that donated, I'm a matchy, you know, that's amazing. Yeah. It, it was my fault. It took so long. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it your fault? It ended up being a good bonus in the I'm end. Like, so oops. oops, just still missing. I guess you gotta donate more. Oops. It's all strategy, folks. <laughs> He's not even trying. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to big cup. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, we got another question here from my rates ninety seven. Uh I think this is a leading question. Uh, yeah. What is your favorite Kendama Facebook group? Oh, well, I, I think I'm only in one. It's Dama Club. The, yeah, the Dom Dama Fam. Yeah, the Dama Fam Inc. Yeah. You're in there. Are, you're an admin in that group, aren't you? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, How did that so they, happen? Well, it all started off, They it was a cat, and they wanted to name it uh, Boogie T's Dama Club. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I already have a, a page called Drama Club. And it's literally just an R that's missing. And I'm like, imagine somebody searching for drama club or Dama club. I'm like, <laughs> so and also I had to tell them, I'm like, dude, I already have a plan for that. So the, we were going to have the Dama club, like uh, for the tour, for the meet and greets. That's what it was going to be called. Mm. The Dama club meetup. Cause it's like drama club, Dama club. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we only had one show on the tour because COVID. So that didn't work out. Mm. So that was a bummer. I'm like, well, I wanted to use that name, so we can't yeah. use that. So they changed it to Dom Fam, and I was super stoked on that. And it's a really cool thing. And they got like all the little, they're making the what, conditioner and all kind of shirts yeah. and all kind of cool stuff. Yeah, they're, they're having it's a good a time there. It's a positive spot, you know, it's super yeah. positive. You could be at any level, just go in there and be like, look, I'm trying this out. I have a question. And you yeah. guys help me out. And everybody's like, man, you got it. Big up, you know? Yeah. Six, five, and that's what I love about Kendama too. Nobody's really a hater. And yeah. I'm really hoping that with the more people that come in that don't understand the Kendama culture and like the community that we have, mm -hmm. I don't want a bunch of like randos coming in be being like, oh yeah, I, I got into this because of blah, blah, blah. And now I'm a, I'm a Kendama guy. Or, but like yeah. or being mean about it to people, you know? Like, yeah. I, I would hate for that to happen. Cause I've seen that with like exponential growth of certain really cool communities. Mm -hmm. Like it could be underground and it's awesome and cool and everybody's sick. But then all these other new people start coming in that don't understand the unspoken rules and guidelines of the community. Yeah, they kind of mess it up for people sometimes. And I'm I'm keeping my fingers crossed that if we keep not like a stronghold on it, but like just an eye out for people that are 
negative, you know, like, I don't know. It, and you can't filter out everybody, but mm -hmm. I, I do worry about that. I, I just want, I want it to be really a positive, really cool place to play, you know? Yeah, I think one of my biggest fears, and I think a lot of the people in the Kendama community's biggest fear is that Kendama starts to become like a, more than just a community and it becomes this like competitive space like everybody's trying to be better than other people because that, mm -hmm. that's not what it's about we're actually trying to push people to be better than themselves and to, right. for us to be better than ourselves like that's the whole principle of kendama kaizen this continuous growth improvement in our lives mm -hmm. so that's my biggest concern is like as more people join in it becomes more competitive and like we need to show off rather than yeah. just be ourselves play the yeah, game we love and introduce it to people Dude, oh, just hit the trick. Yeah, hit the trick. have fun. Get some satisfaction for yourself. Like, yes. I don't care if you hit it. Yeah, it, it doesn't affect you me. You feel good. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, uh, a couple more questions here, and then we'll we'll jump into some of the sweet mob conversation. Uh, Haley Bischoff, a Konami USA pro, wants to know if you could only listen. Wait, is that H Bish? H Bish. Yeah. H Bish wants to know. She <laughs> wants to know if you could only listen to one song for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh. Oh, well, obviously, it has to be Ain't No Sunshine by Bill Withers. Okay. I have it slapped on my arm already, so might as well. Oh, no way. Sick. Yeah. So, I love that song. I, that would be it. I mean, I can't pick another one because it's tattooed on my body. I have to look at it every day regardless. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It might, you, might, you might as well double up on it, right? Double okay. up. <laughs> uh, question from the official Deep Purchase, longtime supporter of the show. Uh, who inspires you musically that would surprise us? Um, surprise you? Uh, I mean, you'd probably be a little surprised that I've been getting into Hans Zimmer. Yo! Yeah, it's like with, uh, so hanging out with like Ganja White Knight and stuff, they're super, super like orchestral and yeah. really into that stuff. So Dude, that's, oh my that's pretty gosh. surprising. I could riff on Hans Zimmer for hours. I freaking love that guy. Mm. I love movie scores. Like growing up yeah. as a kid, I used to like play video games online competitively and I would listen to movie scores and I would like play the movie visually in my head as I'm listening to the music. And it just like, yeah. it hits different. It, it, it really totally does. Do it's, such, it's literally just all emotion. Yeah. It's, it's almost not even like a song because the structure is like not even really there. There's no time signature. It's just sound. Yeah. Jeez. Well, it's story, right? It's like very narratively driven. Yeah. And it has mo Oh my God. Anyways, I could riff on it for a long time. Yeah. I love, love me some Hans Zimmer. Okay. Um, Doc Dama wants to know if you could have one superpower, why would it be to never miss a whirlwind? This is a really leading <laughs> question. <laughs> He's he's kind of made an assumption here that that's what you would pick. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I honestly I think my superpower would be to fly. Okay. That would be my pick. But um, but if my, since my superpower is to never miss a whirlwind, why would it be that? <laughs> um, to look cool everywhere. So every time I walk into a club, I hit it. I mean, that's, I, that's a good reason to. Yeah. Dude, you you would you would be an icon if you never missed a whirlwind. Just like, I, it, I think, I think it, it would get that boring. That would actually be amazing because you could just be like, whoa, <laughs> and, and still hit it. Back. Yeah, it just uh, flips in the air. I, I think it would be boring though, right? Because there's never a feeling of risk. It's never like yeah, you have to no, try. But no, yeah. no, no, no. That's the only trick you can hit. Every yeah, other sure. trick, like, oh, I might miss my still. You know, I don't know what's going on with this bird, but yeah. that whirlwind always got it on lock. Yeah, I could like throw it over a house and it'll come back in my hand like a boomerang or something. That'd be yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I got a couple here from the chat. We'll hit maybe two or three more and then let's dive into this conversation uh, a little bit more. Uh, Bray Dama from Canada uh, has a comment, not really a question, but he wants mm -hmm. to say that Sweets Canada wouldn't be a thing today if it wasn't for Boogie. So what? shout out to Boogie. That's uh, crazy. I, apparently he got into Kendama through you as well as Sweets Canada is influenced by Reed Stark and that wow. pop, popping off. Honestly, the Sweets Mob has done so much good. I, I am amazing. very grateful. Wow, big up. That's okay. huge. Let's hit maybe one or two more here. Ooh, question from D Pats again. How many visuals do you play in your sets that include Kendamas in them? Oh, wow. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I know, uh, so Ebo, that's um, Ganja's uh, visual guy. He's done a lot of them where I'm just flipping them. And there's one where I have it on my finger. I'm doing earth turns on my finger. It's kind of cool. Um, my boy Kuz, he does all my visuals. And yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, 
I don't even know a number, but there's a lot there. there and we also hide them in little spots too, mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of the, the merch and stuff, if you look really closely in it, there's the Kandama hiding in everything. <laughs> Right on. Okay, I got one funny question here from Matt Kirby, 845. And then we'll dive back into our Sweets Mom conversation. He wants to know, if y'all could be any object in a kitchen, fork, toaster, dishwasher, etc., what would you be and why? I love this question. I've never heard okay. of it. Uh, what would I be? Um, microwave is kind of sketchy. I want to be something that kind of chills, you know? Or maybe like the... Uh, I'm like thinking about my kitchen. Yo, forget my my just my garbage disposal. Trick that. Mine's broke. So I don't want to be broken. Maybe I like my hood vent. Mm. You know, like the hood vent over my stove. It's like in the middle. And yeah, I dropping the everything. tones all day. And I, I like suck all the smoke out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, right on. Um, I'll I think be the hood vent. <laughs> for myself, I'm obviously going to be some sort of a coffee making device, maybe an AeroPress, a Chemex. There you go. Yeah. Like, I want to be really where the caffeine's at. Coffee maker. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, let's jump back into our conversation here uh, regarding your growth into the Kanama community. I want to know a little bit of the story of how you got connected to Sweets in particular and when you actually released the, the first Boogie T mod because that was huge. Like that mod, honestly, I have one. I see them everywhere. I don't know many people who don't have one. Yeah. It's become a very iconic Kendama in that's the community. Really crazy. It still blows my mind. I'm like, that's... Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. How did Big you... Shout to, uh, Matt Maroka. Yeah, he, oh yeah. Uh, he designed it all. Um, and that, I mean, that was like, I don't even remember the first drop, but I remember talking. It must have been Reed that connected me with Matt. And then we talked about designing one. So I was, yeah, that had to be it. I was just like, Reed has one, so I, I, I can make one. And I'll be the yeah. first DJ to make one. You know, I think that'd be cool. Yeah, you you were the first of the wave of, of DJs that have now had mods through Sweet Skin Domas. And there's been a couple since now. But you were the first well, a one. Lot now we got Disciples, the, the whole crew, Barely Alive, Phase One, uh, uh, Mode Step. I actually yep. have the first Mode Step prototype, which is kind of hype. And there's a um, new one coming out too. Dirt Monkey got Dirt one. Monkey. Uh, Subtronics. Um, uh, uh, the boy uh, G Space, he just put one out. Crazy. Grady. Yeah, I mean, it's getting nuts. And I mean, we're all around each other and we're all have so much time in the green room. Might as well. You know, we all just. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, they'll be like, yo, you, you can have one too. Why not? Yeah. It's more the merrier. So the whole dubstep collection, it's kind of fun. Yeah, that's sick. Okay, talk, talk me through a little bit of that. You were the first one to do it. And, and that, I imagine, was as a unique process, right? Designing your own Kendama, releasing that. I'm actually curious what the first response to that was from the community, from the dubstep community in particular. What was their response to Kendama? Uh, I mean, it was pretty easy. They were just gravitated, like I said. It was just like, once you show them the spike, it's like anybody else. But I feel like we have a little bit more free time. You know, we have like, we play our hour set and we go home and we make music, but in between making music, it's like a little something to play with, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it wasn't hard to convince them that they'd like it. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, it's, I feel like that with everybody. That's the magic of these things. You don't have yeah. to convince anybody. I was thinking about it. It's like, dude, that's like selling, it's like selling drugs, but it's legal. <laughs> it is that addicting, right? It's that addicting. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. Okay, so did by by chance? I don't know if you you listen to the Dominards podcast uh, with Rod and MJ ever. Um, but yeah, Reed, yeah, yeah. Reed I've, Stark. I've seen it sometimes. Yeah, Reed Stark was just on an episode with them a couple weeks back, and he was talking about his introduction into Kanama and and how there were some challenges for him, especially in bringing it into a new community. Like he got he got some people that from from the BMX and skate culture community that were kind of like against it at first and and gave yeah. him some some struggle. Did you did you ever experience that, or was it all love? Like, what do you think made yeah. it? hit hard with dubstep that it just clicked and people were like yeah i'm in um i mean we're kind of we're not very uh competitive in the dubstep scene i mean yeah, yeah. there's some competition but it's a lot like the kendama scene you know mm. we're all just homies and like if anybody makes a song we all support them and we're all cool with each other or at least most of us at least my friends that do it yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. at least the people at least the people that i surround myself with yeah. And I mean, that's the people that actually like Kendama. So it's like, the, it's just like minded people, you know, it's a vibe. I'm pretty specific on vibes. 
Yeah. If, like I could like somebody before even knowing them. Yeah. Uh, like you. I was like, oh, <laughs> I could talk to you. You know, he seems cool. I, I drink coffee. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like I said, just like-minded people, and um, we're all just pretty friendly. You know. Yeah. There's not really much dubstep beef. Yeah. Sure. I I, I can't. I mean, like. There, dubstep is probably interesting like that because I think in other musical genres there is beef like that's part of the whole genre of rap like in the rap community yeah. beef is part of the community like that's mm -hmm. that's ingrained in the culture but dubstep's not like that it's like everybody's out there to just create a party yeah like everybody's yeah. out there to bring people together I mean yeah sure there's some fallouts with some certain people obviously with everything you know yeah and likewise in Dom majority we're all chilling yeah, and it's the same with Dama. I think there's there's individuals in the community that stand out as maybe not quite there for the same reasons as others. And and yeah. honestly, they don't usually last that long. And they, they kind of phase out because they realize this isn't the same culture. There's, right. You know, yeah. like when they bring drama into Dama, they usually don't stick around for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, and probably maybe that's the same in dubstep. I'm not sure. Oh, bro. If you could get blacklisted like. Yeah, like that, you don't don't mess up and don't don't mess with the wrong people you know they have some people that are really cool and we're just trying to make this a cool place but if you start bringing some neggy vibes oh boy yeah. cow, you're out <laughs> you're out dude yeah we're like dubs have guardians we're like dude no 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 we don't do that around y'all not yeah. my name think about it like if you, you don't want to be associated like oh you do that well that guy does you know that's gross you don't want to yeah. be uh set in a you don't want to be put in the same box as some negative bad apples, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. Uh, since you've launched your Boogie Tea Mod uh, and we've seen the Sweets Mob kind of come into full swing and full force and it's still growing, like, man, it seems like Sweets is partnering with someone new every month and it's crazy. It's really cool to see this. I'm curious from your perspective, because you were one of the early members of the mob, uh, where do you see the most potential for Kendama as a community in growing? It's obviously boomed in EDM and dubstep, mm. but on the inside, and as someone who's just widely connected, uh, yeah. what opportunity do you see ahead for Kendama? Um, I've, I've been trying to think about that. Like, who is the next group to infiltrate? You know, like, <laughs> um, I'm not really sure. I think maybe, like, maybe a couple sports teams. That'd be kind of fun. You know, I don't think we have any sports guys really yet, you know, like, Think about like not mainstream sports look yeah. cross yeah like a weird abstract sport hockey you know yeah. i'll uh, bring it up north to canada <laughs> yeah we got hit up uh sweet canada come on let's get some hockey players on here yeah you know but like that 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 would be super cool because the thing about kendama everyone could do it you can do it your mom could do it your grandma could do it like so anybody that can yeah if you could do it just do it <laughs> yeah I think it'd be fun for everybody, but I don't know. Infiltrate another, another maybe a sports team, and it's already a game. They're already competitive. They would like it, you know. They're like, oh, I gotta get this, you know. Yeah, so I think they would be pretty stoked about it. That might be kind of cool. Yeah, I I'm always curious to see what's gonna come next for Kendama. I haven't been around in the community for for all that long. I've been playing for like five five and a bit years now, yeah. which feels like a long time, but it's still small in the scope of a lot of people that have been around and people have seen the different waves come and go. And I think we all try to like predict what's coming next. But yeah. do any of us really know? I don't know. See, I mean, I've only been in what two, maybe almost three years or something like that. Um, like, what do I know? You know, like, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm mind blown that this is getting this far for me. Yeah. You know, like, and I, I really have no clue what could be next. I'm, I'm pretty much shocked. But I don't know, just thinking about the path that it is going on. Yeah. Why so, not? yeah. So what about for yourself? Like, where do you see the future of Kendama for you? I think some people in the community see Kendama as like, they have this ambition or goal of either becoming one of the best players. Like they have this like, progression mind of like i want to become the best other people are like no i want to invest in the community uh yeah. you're in a perspective or in a place where you have the opportunity of you know <laughs> monetizing kendama and becoming more of a business side and influencing it that way yeah uh, what is what do you see as your future for kendama and what do you want um i like just showing people you know yeah. i really love when somebody what is that you know like i could be at yeah. a ball. what is that i'm like oh let me show you <laughs> you know, and that that really gets me off, you know, like, I'm like, oh, I love teaching people something that they didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, and that that's where I'm at. And also, I'm all about the community, you know, like, 
that's my biggest thing. So I like, I love donating to like, all, like the NAKO and all that yeah. cool stuff, you know? I, I think everybody should have a good, solid place to do this. Cause yes. I, I just love it that much. Dude, and, and shout out you for a second. I, I've been in the community for a while watching like the sweet lives. I don't think I've seen anyone gift as many subs as you have, like just dropping <laughs> subs on people or engaging in the Dama fam or just jumping on people's lives, jumping in the community. And I think like that kind of is like, weird or abnormal for someone of, of a size of influence that you do have like you you are a large page you you have a lot of people that are probably vying for your attention but yet you give your attention to this community which means a lot yeah. like kendama is that like gang mentality where you got to be in to be in and i think you've actually showed up where yeah. i think so many people watch big influencers pick up a kendama and they're like uh he's probably not around for a long time i agree with that too and that that blows my mind. I'm like, they, they, I could see the, the, not, I'm not gonna say phony, but mm -hmm. I can see the people that um, are in it because they love it. You know, I really yeah. do enjoy playing, you know? Yeah. And I, I could care less if I had a mod or not, you know? Yeah. It, I would still play. And it's yeah. because I like it, you know? It's yeah. Not and for and that, anybody. Like we were saying, it's just for ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's really what it is all about. And I think everybody needs to find that. I think some of us will create these goals and sometimes we got to let them go and say like, guys, it's just a ball in a cup. Like I'm yeah. having fun. I'm catching it on a big cup. I learned something new. Yeah. That's what it's about, right? It's about progression. It's about community. Mm -hmm. It's about all these things. And, and I, think, I think the thing that I've really appreciated about your presence in the community is that you've showed that. You've showed that it's just fun and you can have fun with it. Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah, man. Dude, uh, thank you. Wow. That, that means a lot, first off, to me to hear that again from people. Oh, I, love, I love that every time. Okay. We got a ton of questions in here, uh, and I could talk forever about everything. But before we dive into some questions, <laughs> I do want to poke at something that you have been posting a lot on your grid about, which is fishing. You are mm -hmm. big into fishing, and yeah. your family's into it. Dude. Love fishing. What got you into fishing, and why should I get into it? Um. So, I mean, yeah, ever since I was a little bitty baby boy, my grandpa was always fishing. And my dad, yeah, I mean, he's, if you followed my, my dad, Trivi. Yeah. He's oh my, your the dad, sickest first fisherman up. in the world right now. And I your mean, dad is also crazy funny. Like, he's in oh, the Dama hilarious. fam. He's engaging. Like, he's in Kendama, yeah. too. Where did I get it from? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you know, like, if, I wouldn't be half this funny without him, you know? Yeah. Okay, so tell, tell me more about fishing. <laughs> um. So yeah, fishing, we would go, uh, we have a little spot down by uh, where my dad lives. Uh, it's called Sidmore Point. He has a little camp out there. And I mean, we go catch speckled trout and redfish and all kind of stuff. So it's like in the Gulf and we'll go get crabs. But I fish right next to my house. I have a little canal that's like literally a house down from me. So I go sit out there with beer. I might go do that today, actually. Yeah. Um, I'll go sit there with some beer and just, I mean, just catch a little brim and catfish and Fun yeah, you pull like in that. some fat fish. Oh my yeah. gosh! Oh, that so that was at a place called Marsh Island, and that's where we get crabs. And so those are big drum. And then uh, yeah. the other ones, garfish. That's what I'm really about. Gar wow. fishing is so fun. So there's okay. these, like alligator looking fish, yeah, yeah. long, um, and you can actually eat them too. They taste like gator apparently, but people grind them up and make uh, they fry them. Yeah, yeah. They make like little alligator gar balls. That's what they're called. Crazy. Um, have you ever gone noodling, like catfish noodling? No, no, no. Okay, no. so that like... I need actually, I just need my hands too much. Right. <laughs> All these guitars would be useless if I didn't have one. Dude, I want. Or I, I couldn't even dom if I didn't have it. <laughs> it's too, my, it's too risky. A, ambidextrous. <laughs> it's too risky. I've I've seen videos of people doing it with their feet though. Right. You could give yeah, up your yeah. feet. That's you don't need those. They, that's how they start it. If the hole's super deep, you gotta put your whole leg in because you gotta breathe. Yeah. You, you get your leg in it, and then you go grab it from there. Yeah, I've seen some crazy stuff, but I'm not doing that. No, thank you. Yeah, I, w I watched a video on YouTube a little while ago. I don't know if you know who Maddie Matheson is. Uh, mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, he's a Canadian cook, I've and he goes that, down uh, there with the, like, uh, yeah, it's so good, dude. It's hilarious, dude. He's like, ah, you, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's holding the fish. It's so good, he, and he can't do it. He's just like pulling his leg in and out, in and out. But actually, though, it would be so scary, so intimidating to go live noodling. Like you're literally sticking your arm or your Ooh. foot in the mouth of a sea monster. <laughs> yeah, no thank you. So that big catfish that uh, I posted the other day, that was only like 35 pounds. 
they're catching 60 pound catfish so double that size that's crazy double that's that is crazy with their hand i'm like there's no yeah. way absolutely I, no way. I like, I want to believe that I could do it, but I think if I was in the scenario, in the situation, I'd be like, I think I'd be like Maddie. I think I'd be freaking out. I'm like, I'm putting my foot in this gator hole. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, so many people do it. It can't be that bad. Yeah, not that many people die. So it can't yeah. be, I mean, <laughs> the stats are in my favor. A finger. Yeah. Who needs them anyways? Okay. Hey, Ten. we have a ton of questions in here. Um, I know that I asked you for an hour. Uh, if you're okay with going over time, we can fire oh, I'm through. I'm ready. I have nothing else to do. All right, Beauty, let's fire through a bunch of these questions from the people that want to know answers from you. We got a couple, again, that were submitted ahead of time that I saved for the end. Um, Kazuko Kendama, or Nate, I believe is his name, asked, outside of Kendama being a toy, what does it mean to you in your sphere, in your sphere of influence? What, what does that mean? I, that's a good question. I didn't ask the question, but outside of Kendama being a toy, what maybe what does it mean to you beyond just being a fun toy? Um, I, I, I guess the answer to that would be, I just appreciate the way I could focus, you know, like, mm. like the amount of focus I get. I feel like uh, when I do play, I could get in slow motion kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a weird headspace that you kind of go into. It's like a weird, yeah, you flow. Know about. Like you'll follow and you're like, oh man, I am in slow yes. motion right now. The whole, t the clock just yeah, yeah. went to a, a whole nother time warp kind of thing. Th there's I mean, a, that's like the vibe that I'm like searching for. Yeah, you know, there's even this. though it is a toy, but yeah. we like to call it a tool. Yes, know? there's a, there's a guy, I have his book here. I'm trying to remember where he's from. He's like Russian or something. His name is Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. And he wrote this book on flow and it's like that entire like psychology of flow where things start to slow down and it gets rhythmic and you get in this mm -hmm. state of like deep focus and Kendama it's does weird. that. And it's like, it, it's its own drug, man. Like it literally is euphoric. You don't get it in many other places in life and it's so sick. Mm -hmm. I love well, it. It's gotta be like an actual chemical getting released. It's like serotonin. Uh, it's gotta be something, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I wish I knew more about like the brain, but like what part of the brain is like slowing down? Like what low, is that like the, Frontal lobe, back lobe. I, 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 I have no idea. Surgeon. I'm a DJ, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, man, I, <laughs> Funky Hef down in the chat. Thank you. I worked really hard to pronounce this guy's name when I read the book. His name, like, look at this. I, I don't know if you can see where, where is his name on here. You're it's not even be harder able... backwards. Yeah, but it's like, <laughs> it looks like it's pronounced Mahali Chiksent Mahali or something. I don't know, but it's Mihai Chiksent Mihai is how you pronounce yeah. it. Anyways. Nonetheless, it's a really interesting book. He's a psychologist. Those of you that are tuning in, if you want to read it, go read books. It's helpful. Dopamine. Um, it's dopamine. Yeah, dopamine. Yeah, um, that's the okay. word I was looking for. <laughs> uh, so another question here from Wes008 underscore. He asked, do you think Kendama lends itself particularly to dubstep? Or do you think we can see Kendama grow in other genres or all genres? All genres. Every musician would love a Kendama. It doesn't matter. I play every genre. And I play Kendama. You know, I play blues, I play rap, I will play dubstep, I play hip hop, drum and bass, all this stuff. Um, and all these cats, like every person that I do meet that is in another genre, he, like Shawa is a super sick Mardi Gras Indian band out here. If you don't know about the Mardi Gras Indians. I don't know. Yo, they're incredible. Um, so yeah, that my keyboard player, Andrew, he plays uh, with them. He plays keyboard with them. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh man, super sick group of guys. And I mean, they're just the funkiest cats, you know? But that's a totally different genre. It, definitely jam band scene, yeah. But mm -hmm. they, um, mm -hmm. yeah, they love it. And every time I bring it around, they're like, oh, oh, can I, let, hey, let me see that Kendama. I'm like, all right, <laughs> do you go. Do you think that you're beginning to get more known for Kendama? Do you think your Kendama influence is outpacing your EDM influence? Do you, do you see um, them going in tandem? I mean, I think it, there's no way that more Kendama people know about me than for sure the music because no, like, yeah but how many Kendama people are there that's what I'm trying to find out do you do you see a lot of people getting into your music through Kendama that's what I'm actually curious about I, I have seen it you know because they'll be like I, well I bought this mod I, I just liked it and I don't like, even know who this guy who is. is you know so they'd be like I ended up really liking his music too I'm like ah very cool so that worked out. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, uh, so I, I was telling, telling my coworkers about, about your mod and that you were jumping on the, on the podcast and my, my boss, he's like, that's kind of cool. I'm going to go listen to his music. And he comes back like the next day and he's like, yeah, I was listening to Boogie T last night. And I was like, that's sick. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, we got a ton of questions in here. Oh my gosh. They keep rolling in. Uh, we got a question from, uh, we got one from Theodore. Uh, he is a grain theory Kandama pro. He wants Ooh. to know, uh, do you have three or what are your top three favorite Kandama edits that are not from Sweets Kandamas? Okay. Oh, man. He's um, testing your knowledge, I think. Oh, man. You could also answer it. Who are your favorite three players that are not on Sweets, maybe? Okay. Uh, was it Dwet Dwetsky? The Westy? Dwet Dylan Westy, Westmoreland? Yeah. Oh, man. Killer. He is so good. Um, uh, who's the other guy? Um, uh, with jo Josh Kim. Oh yeah, from Kendama USA. Yeah, super Spiker, good. Uh, Yanker Pro. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, the, was it Br Brian? Is he on Sweet So? Uh, Brian Skegline. He's on Chrome. Yeah. Oh, he used to be on Kendama USA. Yeah. All okay. three incredible influences yeah. in Kendama as well. Yeah, they're they're also good. Austin Donovan down in the chat. Josh Kim is my, my boy, son. Yeah. I love Austin. Yeah, Austin Donovan, also incredible, incredible influence in Kendama. Mm -hmm. Guys, you need to follow him. He's literally the, one of the smartest guys in Kendama, True. always analyzing things. Go yeah. listen to his episode on Dominards too. So good. Um, okay, we got a question here from Epic underscore Palm Tree. Is balancing Kendama and music easy for you? Or do you make time? Or do you have to make time? It's actually really easy. I like, uh, so I have my whole living, well, I have a kendama room basically so I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll, yeah like look i'll just walk into here and i'll be like okay well i'll just see him on the counter so like they have the whole wall over there yeah and then we got a bunch over here um and then like a bunch in here so i'll like walk by and just be like i have to hit a whirlwind you know so yes like, boom. <laughs> and then uh i'll just go on with my stuff but then i'll be like okay why well, sometimes i'll be like i can't go pee until I hit this trick. I can't go make music until I hit this trick. Can't do this until I do this. So mm -hmm. that's really fun. Um, and it's like, I don't know, you just shred whenever you want to shred. And there's so much downtime. Like, mm. there's really, there's time for both. Mm -hmm. But it's very easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think, honestly, in life, it's all the priorities. You always have one on you and you, you'll be good. Yeah, and, and it's always priorities. It's like, if you want to be playing, you're going to make time. You're going to find time to play. Yeah. Like, if it's something you love, it's like music. If you love music, you're going to find the time to play music. If you love whatever you love, if you love reading, you're going to find time to read. Uh, it's about whether or not you love it. You want, I, I want to do it, you know? Yeah. So if I want to do something, I'm, I do what I want. Exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, Brett Walters wants to know, what is your favorite film score? Ooh. Oh, man, wait, I knew this. Like, oh, I'm thinking of like, like whole movie. Sure. Yeah. Maybe, maybe like a movie that like the music was like, yes. Oh, which one? I want to go back to that. I got to think about it. Uh, there was a, a whole movie that I was like really into just because of the music. Man, I can't think of it. There's so many good ones. Uh, I, I mean, anything by Hans Zimmer for sure. Like Gladiator is so good. I mean, the parts of the Caribbean soundtrack too in itself is like, really moving you can yeah. go through the whole dark knight trilogy the whole dark knight trilogy soundtrack literally is so good and and everybody thinks they sound the same throughout number one number two number three but they have distinct differences that you can yeah. tell which movie that song is from by just listening and i listened to them so much when i was when i was in high school well there was this one i i remember growing up i had a cd and it was the 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 whole uh track list hold on please uh, say can, iron man number one the acdc <laughs> it was batman what's the one with jim carrey uh oh gosh uh as the riddler um um that was uh batman I, forever yeah, yeah yeah so yeah it was the batman forever soundtrack yeah we got a lot in the in the chat shouting out interstellar space jam we got, oh, we got a couple in there great. we got some good ones in there okay um, I, I just remember I had the CD of it and I would listen to it over and over. I don't even, 
I need to rewatch that one. That was a good one. Batman Forever. Yeah, I haven't seen the old Batmans in a long time. Okay. Good. Okay, one thing I totally forgot to bring up that I want to know uh, is Kanama Goat and World Check. How did that come to being and how did that come to life? The the biggest song in Kendama. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that was just a, I don't know. I was just making a beat one day and I was like, you know what? I just started doing like some goofy ass raps. So, you know, uh, that song, there's a song with uh, like Future. It's I think called King's, King's Dead. Okay. Um, but yeah, Future does this funny ass part. He's like, uh, and like it's like wait what but uh he's like i pull up to the uh i got a hundred thousand and i freaked it yeah so it's like the same kind of cadence uh, yeah yeah yeah. and i was just thinking i was just kind of freestyle i was like i woke up in the coming in a whirlwind <laughs> so uh um, you had posted a clip of that what like a couple months back yeah like a long time ago and i remember seeing that in the dama fam that was that kind of went a little bit viral in the kanama community at the time was that a full song at that point or were you just messing around and then it became something so i i wrote the verse i mm. wrote my verse and then i was like well i don't really feel like doing another verse so i was like oh well i saw uh i saw the video that they did with um bjorn and yeah it was lace it when i chase lace it when yeah. chase it you know so i was like i oh, just hit up goat because I, I already followed him and stuff and uh, I always thought he was hilarious. I'm like, dude, just send me a verse. He's like, oh, all right, for sure. <laughs> sure. Dude, we I, actually got to kick it um, when I was in LA. Yeah, we were show. we were just talking about that the other day on on one of my Sunday morning chats with him. Yeah, he he rolled up to one of your shows and you sash Dama, and it, yeah, it yeah. was supposed to be like a virtual show or something like that, right? Uh, no, it was a um, it was, it was a, a park, drive -in. yeah, a drive-in show. Yeah, super sick. So did, had you known who Kendama Goat was beforehand? Because he was big in the heavy metal scene with Heavy Heavy Lolo and, yeah, and some yeah, other yeah. bands. I, I, so I, again, I, I found him through Kendama and just learned all this stuff later. Wow. Like, same with like Hobie and Boo and uh, yeah. David Gravett and all these cats. I'm like, dude, these guys are like legends in their own team. Yeah. But I know them from Kendama, which is like the coolest thing. And like, they don't know me from what I do. They just know me from Kendama. So yeah. it's like, this is our thing. And then, oh, cool, you do that. So I like learning that about people before. It, it's nice not knowing what somebody does before. So there's no like preconceived like, oh, whoa, you were on like King of the Road and like, whoa, you're like super famous with mm -hmm. like, blah, 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 blah. Nothing, you, none of that even mattered. Yeah, so, okay, curious question for you on that. Uh, because you do have quite a large following, do you, do you, do you like when people reach out to you? Do you want people to reach out to you? Do you like that one-on-one -on -one engagement? Uh, is that something you want more of? Or do you, you know, you know how there's always those kids that are like, oh, it's Mr. Boogie T. <laughs> and they like yeah. pull up and they're like, can I get your signature? Can I get this? Yeah. It's like, does that get tiring? Um, yeah, I, I'd like it to be a little more personable, you know, instead of me being like, I, I understand it's so exciting. I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't know what to do. You yeah. know, like if I was a huge fan of something and I saw it in, in, or like if I had access to it, I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. But um, if I, uh, I don't know, like sometimes they'll come up and it's, it is flattering, but whenever it becomes like, oh my God, well, like, can I get a good, I'm like, <laughs> calm down, let's talk to me, talk to me human here human being here so it's like i'd rather be like somebody come up and be like hey man uh, i just got to tell you like super sick nice to meet you yeah You're, like really big influencer blah 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 you really cool thank you so much yeah uh do you mind if we like take a picture real quick that'd be kind of cool i'd be like oh dude obviously you know that's super cool easy not the <gasps> is that mr booker t <laughs> there was one time so this is weird. I wasn't even like that, like big or whatever. But yeah. I was like just kicking it at this festival. And this uh, this one chick, she came up and she was a fan. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, I'll take a picture with you. So we're like, I'm just walking around doing my thing. And uh, yeah, so she's like, yeah, um, we're taking the picture. And this other chick randomly walks up with her phone and she goes, she starts filming like me getting a picture taken. And she looks over at her friend and goes, who's this guy? <laughs> And I stopped the whole thing. I said, I said, excuse me. I took my phone out and started filming her. And I was who like, are you? I said, who is she? Who is this? 
I said, do you just really film people that you don't know? Do you really just do that to people? Do you walk up and film people you don't know? I said, and she, you should have seen her face. She was like, and then like ran away. I was so over it. I was like, you don't do that. You're crazy. <laughs> I, I freaked some people out though. I freaked some fans out. Like, That's you know, awesome. I love telling them no. That I'm like, can I get a picture with it? I'm like, nah, no. <laughs> They're like, I'm like, I'm just kidding. Come on. <laughs> or I'll, I'll tell them it's like thirty bucks or something. Yeah. <laughs> Say like a random number, like eighteen cents and some dryer lint. Yeah, give me that. That's like, awesome. What? That's. <laughs> Actually, That's so funny. At an after party I went to, I was charging people a dollar. and To take a photo? Yeah, so just a dollar. I was just Dude, like... That's I, steep, man. Are you? That's some pretty I high used, prices. I made like 30 bucks in this one little club taking pictures, and then I bought everybody drinks with the 30 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I went to the bar and got everybody some drinks. I was like... There were, and the one guy actually got so mad at me. He's like, you're really going to charge me a dollar to take a picture with you? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're really yeah. not going to pay me a dollar to take a picture with me? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, let's hit maybe a dollar. <laughs> hey, man, the economy, it's going down the drain. A dollar is a lot. for you an egg in these trying times. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's hit maybe two or three more questions. There's a ton. We're going to definitely miss some. My phone okay. is actually dying. This is one of the longest episodes we've done to date. Uh, so let's hit a, cup, a couple more and then we'll, we'll wrap up this episode. But let me say, first off, again, huge thank you, Boogie, for jumping on here. This is a privilege for me. It's a privilege for the community to hear more of your voice in Kendama and to get more of your thoughts and to just hear your journey, hear your story and hear your heart for the game. I think so many of us just want to hear more stories of how people love this freaking ball and cup that we all play. So fun. It's a fun game. <laughs> That's what it is. It's, it's just so fun. fun. Um, okay, we got a fun, fun question here, and I know you've kind of ranted on this before, but do you have any thoughts on festivals and shows, uh, security, having a tendency to not allow kendamas to be brought in? This is from Kendama Adventure. Yeah, I think it's stupid. <laughs> I think it's absolutely ridiculous, and it makes me so mad, because if somebody's going to have a kendama, they know what they're doing with it. They're not using it as a weapon. They're not stabbing people with it. They're, they're playing with their little, oh my god, it makes me so mad. And when it's I just first heard this, I felt like it was almost like somebody tried to like sabotage or something. I'm like, what is this? Somebody like making up some crazy rumors that it's like, somebody even said it was a smoking apparatus. I'm like, actually, no, it's not. <laughs> They're like, people are gonna hide drugs in these. I'm like, well, don't give them the ideas. You just made that. Yeah, they just made the whole idea up. I'm like, this is crazy. People saying that people are gonna get hit with them. Um, I don't know. So yeah, that was a big bummer. So when we went on tour, they were like, yeah, you can't sell them at certain venues. And I was like, this is crazy. Y'all are insane. So we had to make a clause that if they bought it, they'd have to come back at like the very end of the night to pick it up at mm -hmm. the merch booth, you know, so or another thing was to keep it in the box, but that didn't last long, you know, so oh, that was really frustrating. I just don't understand why they do that. Hey, man. I'm like, that's, we just that got to start tucking them in our pants if we want to roll into one of your shows with them. Well, you know, I'm going to start making it like a thing that like you should be allowed to bring it in. You know, yeah. if I'm playing a show, it's part of the thing. It's like Guar can throw pig blood on people, but they can't bring a kendama into it. You know, like, what is that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some people, man. I saw man. kendama go throw a mic stand at somebody. <laughs> yeah, I just saw that clip. I just saw that video. I'm like, okay, and they can't bring a, a kendama in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, ooh, there are a lot of really good questions in here. Uh, okay, maybe th this one's a fun one for me because I'm heading in down that hair growth journey. We got a question yeah. from Dilly Odama. How long have you grown your hair? How long is it going to take me to catch up? Uh, I mean, I've been growing my hair for a long time. Like, I just don't really cut it. So, like, actually, I had it trimmed the other day, which why, like, it's kind of flat, you know, right here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, since, like, 20... I think the last haircut I got was 2013 or something. Mm. But it's always been like minor trims, you know? And it'll be like like long periods of time before I get a trim. So the more you trim your hair, the the easier it'll grow. Mm. But I've just been really lazy and not trimmed it at all. Mm. So the same with my beard. That's why it stopped growing. So, yeah, 
is is Kendama Goat trying to convince you to join Bald Gang? You gonna you gonna take up his offer? I am not. No, why not? Come on. No. He's rocking sorry. it. It's sick. I, he looks great. Hey, I can't do it. Kendama Goat's setting some trends. Prius Gang, Bald Gang. Look, you man, know he's, he's doing a his thing. He is a trendsetter. Shout out to Kendama Goat. We love him in the community. Okay, maybe last question here, and then we'll wrap up the episode, wrap up the show. Uh, for the week from MVSKA base. Uh, I don't know, Masca base? Is that how you're supposed to? I don't know what, what this is, but <laughs> did you have a moment in your career that you realized you made it? And if so, what was it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're, you're actually muted right now. A big one hear- for me. What? Can you hear me? Sorry, you cut out for a second. Yeah, I can hear you now. All right. Yeah, I just had a phone call. I didn't fix it up. Um, one of the biggest ones that really hit me was like Electric Forest, probably, I think it was like 2017 or maybe six, it might've been 2016. I'm not sure. 2016 or 17. Um, I, I went out with Ganja and we played Flava and like, I went out with just guitar and just shredding. And that was the first time I saw like 30,000 people. And I was like, whoa. Mm. And then ended up like, uh, ben came up and he was like, yo, who wants Boogie T's shirt? And I was like, what? So I like just got this shirt and he had to take it off and throw it at the crowd. Yes. Yeah, so that was really eye-opening for me. I was like, whoa, 2017 then, yeah. And nobody's asked for my shirt off my back yet. I haven't made yeah, it yet. So that that's that's the signal when someone I, finally asks for the shirt off my back. That's how I know. Oh, he's getting another. Sorry, no, no, no. I was, I was right in the middle like of the stage like looking at the light and like looking at the crowd and i'm like shirt off just like that was fun, that was really fun. that's awesome well hey boogie thank you so much for coming on the review uh this is a great privilege for the oh wait audience. wait before we yeah, say, yeah. also i want to say i've definitely not made it yet mm. so i'm not Optim- there yet i'm not okay there yet. optimistic was, outlook I'm gonna say that was a big moment, but I'm, I don't know when I've made it yet because I know I have not. I, maybe when I get a Grammy, I'll say, if, okay. I can get a, if I can get a Grammy, I'm gonna say I made it. Okay. Cause that's, that's my thing. Yeah, well, right on. I well, well let's get Boogie his Grammy. We're gonna, we're gonna go <laughs> lobby the Grammy people. We're let's gonna go. make it happen so that you can finally say I've made it. Yeah. Well, hey, Mr. Boogie T, Thank you so much for joining the review. Thank you so much for coming on here, sharing your love for the game that we all love here. Uh, thank you for sharing a cup of coffee with me. This is always oh, okay. a privilege for me to just drink coffee with friends. Come on. And honestly, again, thank you so much for the work that you've done in the community. Shout out to all the people mentioned in today's episode. Big props to Reed Stark, Sweets Kendamas, and the Sweets Mob for pushing Kendama to more people. The more that we grow this game, the more that we grow ourselves, I think. So... Uh, Guys, those of you that tuned in live, thank you for being here. Those of you listening in the podcast afterwards that aren't already followers or checking out Boogie T, go give the guy a like. Go give the guy a follow. Let him know that you appreciate him and what he does. Uh, if you're not already followed on Cafe Kendama, go ahead and do that. Oh, oh, and Boogie misses his world check. If you're watching on the podcast, make sure you tune in live and see Boogie miss that world check. <laughs> Now, guys, uh, one thing that I do want to say, two things, actually. Uh, next I got week, it. Second try. Second try. Next week, we got an episode coming up with Mr. Gino Gadja. He is coming on to talk about his journey of being a sponsor player to not being a sponsor player, as well as the consistent grind it takes to become one of the best in the world. Gino is on something crazy right now with his tricks, and we are getting him on here to talk about his journey. Alongside that, uh, we are looking at re-releasing these Kendama Latte shirts. So I need one. Th- dude, we'll make it happen. I'm out right now, but come January, we're looking at doing a new line of them in a sand color. So if you are a long-time listener and it's something that you want and it's something that you were looking for, make sure you hit me up in the DMs and make, let me know that you want it because I need to hear it from you guys. Otherwise, I don't want to cost money to produce merch. Also, shout out to your Christmas sweaters. Those things are dope. Oh, yeah. I want <laughs> one. Fun. They're super sick. Well, <laughs> let's wrap it up here, Boogie. Is there anything you want to say to those that are listening either live or on the podcast afterwards today? Um, just have a great day. Stay humble. Stay beautiful. Stay positive. Stay grinding. Hit that spike. Uh, you know, 
just tread and just be the best you you can be. <laughs> be the best you you can be and hit your world check and listen to world check on Spotify, streaming everywhere. Hey, oh, and that is an episode. We will see you guys next week. Go give a like, follow, subscribe on the podcast and let us know that you listened today. Peace out, guys. Love, guys. Thanks again.